Catfish Catfish. <laughs> I gotta warn you, I was up until uh, after the bars closed last night. But I, I was not in the bars, of course. I was in my hotel room trying to finish this talk. So uh, hopefully it makes sense. Um, I am just going to start off. I'm not going to get all the way to the present. I'm just going to talk about my time here from 91 to 96. Okay, and I, I'll probably have too much to say after this. Um, so how did I get here, first of all? So I'm originally from Algona, Iowa. That's my hometown. A little town in north central Iowa, there it is, and you can see it's <laughs> a progressive community. We're on the right track there. <laughs> and I was I was on uh, Google Images last night to get this picture. This is one of the first pictures of Iowa that comes up. It's kind of ironic because I got my first speeding ticket. <laughs> but going up that hill, I just I used to have the misfortune of having to pay people to cut my hair. And um, I was, I just got a haircut, and I was checking, I was a teenager, and I was checking out my look in the mirror, and I was, I was going uh, 10 miles an hour over the speed limit, and so I got a ticket there, and uh, my, my parents were disappointed. It's a small town in Iowa, and you know, they, my father especially is really a law-abiding you know, person, and, and didn't want the, the community to think he was raising a stop law. But I was, I was saved because, um, the pastor of my church fell into sin that same week and also got a speeding ticket. <laughs> <laughs> they published it and we were writing side by side. <laughs> that, that's like some of the sting out of the, uh, the speeding ticket. Um, so after uh, my days at Algona, I went to Warford College, which is in Wayne, Iowa. And it's in the same conference as Central, where you saw Dick uh, playing football. Um, I was a, a math major and a computer science minor, and I had a course. Um, from Hogan Tams, who's been mentioned, I think uh, Josh was mentioned that, right? And so that was my first exposure to statistics, and mostly it was probability things, little simple combinatorics and things, but I, I liked it. Um, but I was first and foremost a basketball player. That was my, my passion at that point in my life, definitely what I wanted to do. And there, there I am, I played for the, the Warford team, as was mentioned. Um, and um, I was thinking that I wanted to maybe major in, or you know, maybe pursue a career in actuarial science, because I had, um, you know, I had this math degree, and, and I read this article about actuarial science being a, a good career for people that had you know, affinity for math. And I was also thinking about uh, another opportunity that had come along, and that was to join the Washington Generals. You may not be familiar with the Washington Generals. They are the team that the Harlem Globetrotters beat every night. <laughs> 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 and I, I sense that there's some connection through our home, actually, my hometown. Somebody knew somebody in the general's organization, and they even talked to me about joining up. And, um, you know, this, this would have been a humbling experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it was kind of appealing because they travel, you know, the low powders travel all over the globe. And, um, you know, you go with them when you're with the Washington Generals, and say so you kind of get to see the world. Uh, but, that, I, you know, I, I'm a little more... Um, pragmatic than that, and I decided not to do that. Um, and I still didn't know what I wanted to do, but Dean Isaacson, uh, Inter Dean Isaacson, he was head of the Department of Statistics at Iowa State at this time. And as was mentioned, his son Jeff went to, to work and we were, we were teammates. Jeff was a little younger than me. But so Dean came to know of me and, and um, recruited, there's, there's Dean right there, he recruited me uh, for graduate school at, uh, in statistics at, at Iowa State, actually. He, he really talked up statistics. And, uh, his, Retirement uh, from being head, I, I said a few words and I really thanked you know Dean for for bringing me into the field and I, I thought and I wondered you know where would I be you know without Dean and I thought well I, I'd probably be uh, an actuary making twice as much money as, as, much as I do as a professor but anyway uh, that was thanks anyway that was thanks anyway. Uh, but I thought I shouldn't apply just to one graduate school. I didn't, I didn't, I wanted to stay, the other reason I didn't join the generals is because I wanted to stay close to a, uh, a young woman who was a high school math teacher in Iowa and I didn't want to get too far away from her and I thought, well, I should apply to at least another school and I thought, well, okay, Iowa, Iowa State, I won't get too far away. So I applied to Iowa and I also was, you know, I thought maybe actuarial science being part of the department and keep my options open. And um, I had a really good visit here when I came to visit. It was a, a day not at all like this one. It was a beautiful day outside. It was, uh, you know, trees were flowering, grass was green, sun was shining, you know, people were out playing frisbee by the river, and it was a really pretty uh, campus, I remember. And I had a really, just, I had a nice lunch. I think maybe, maybe Jim Brockett and uh, Ralph Russo went to lunch with me. Um, I don't remember that for sure, but I know we had a nice lunch and we, we talked, and, and it just seemed like a really nice atmosphere. People that were, you know, 
intellectually curious and, and having fun doing their jobs. And um, that's why I liked it a lot. And I was thinking about coming here, but then I, I was really leaning towards Iowa State. Um, and then I, I had applied to this University of Iowa Fellowship. So this is a university fellowship, not part of the department, you know, beyond the department. And I was late to apply, the deadline had already passed, but I applied anyway. And then enough people turned it down that it, it, the offer came to me. And it was a better deal in the sense that it was a little bit more stipend and fewer duties. You know, first and fourth years, I didn't have to teach or do anything. And, and I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to Iowa. Um, so again, maybe not for the best reasons, but it, 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 it's worked out pretty well. And being a basketball player and, and, and NCAA Division three basketball, small time basketball, uh, I got this uh, also NCAA postgraduate scholarship that I could apply this money to my my expenses as a graduate student. And it was a five thousand dollar scholarship, and I you know I had this other fellowship from Iowa, so I didn't have a lot of expenses. You know, I had some books to buy, but you know back then you couldn't spend five thousand dollars on books. So when I, when I went to um, the controller's office or wherever you go, the NCAA gave the money to Iowa and I, you know, I was trying to figure out how to access it. And they said, well, how would you like it? And I, well, cash. <laughs> <laughs> they found out $5,000 to me. And I went and put a down payment on my phone. <laughs> 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 That's a lovely, savvy uh, vehicle there. And then I also visited uh, Houston Ginsburg, which is, you know, where I live now, over here, near, uh, uh, um, uh, what street is that? Uh, Washington, right? It's on Washington. And I, and I bought an engagement ring, and I got, I got uh, married. <laughs> so that was after my first year graduate. So I, I, spent, I, I spent a year here, and that was enough to be on my own, and I uh, got married. And um, I was, during my first year here, I was, I was, um, not sold on statistics as my future profession, but I thought, you know, okay, I'm going to give it a chance. And then I had this course, 22S154, that, that Josh mentioned. I guess he had uh, Professor Dijkstra as an instructor. I had the pleasure of Bob Hope, okay? And so Bob was teaching this course from uh, Morris de Groot's textbook. Uh, for some reason, we weren't, at the time, there was a conflict of interest rules and we weren't allowed to use your own, your own book for the course if he, he was the author of the book, so, or something like that. That's what he, he explained. But he didn't really follow the book very closely. He, would, he told lots of stories. <laughs> That's what I remember about, about Bob. And he, was, he, was, he was really fun, really inspiring you know, guy. Um, as has been mentioned, you know, he didn't do it by the, you know, all the pedagogical rules that you're maybe supposed to follow, but he really inspired you know, interest in his students. And, uh, and he just you know, had a ton of fun. And um, there he is, right? You, you, most of you uh, know Bob. And that was, that was what really sold me on statistics. That's what, that's what I wanted to do. Um, some things I remember, he was always talking about uh, TQM and continuous improvement in his courses. And he, he did these Mosteller minute papers that Fred Mosteller had you know, uh, suggested. Or he, at the last two or three minutes of class, he'd pass out a piece of paper and you write down you know, what's the, what was the muddiest thing about today's lecture or what's something you want to learn more about. And, um, and then he had these quizzes at every four class periods. He'd always have a quiz and at the end. With like you know, 10 minutes to go, you pass out the quiz, you work at the problems, and then when you walk out of the room, you handed in the paper and he handed you the solutions. And it was really nice. It was really a really good setup. And I, I haven't really instituted that myself. It was a lot of work to help those quizzes, but um, <laughs> it was a good, it was a good system, and, and it, it worked really well. I felt like I, I learned a lot. He picked on me all the time. He'd always be like, "Damn, what, what's the sufficient statistic here?" And so I, the whole time, I was just like trying to guess what he was going to ask me next, and I was working stuff out on paper so I would not embarrass myself in front of class. And it worked out okay. Um, one of the things he talked about is people were, you know, the, there, there's a movement in uh, stat ed about getting data in the classroom. And some people criticized his book because it didn't have a lot of data. And he's like, now you understand, Dan, when I, when I write little x, that's, that's data. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so we had data in this class. So it was well with that. And then Russ mentioned the leads. Now, this is, I mean, I'm not even, this is so surreal, I'm not even sure it happened, but I think it did. But he, like the last week of class, he showed up in, a, in an orange Wheaties suit. He, he always, okay. He showed up in an orange Wheaties sweatsuit. And, you know, I have the Wheaties little insignia, and it was orange. And he's, you know, the story was he sent all the box tops in and he got this Wheaties. <laughs> because he did all through the course, he was, that was his sort of generic treatment was. Did you eat your Wheaties for breakfast or did you have something else? And, for hypothesis testing to see what he said. And then this is a this is a good story. He was very fond of it. Some of you guys know it. I'm not going to tell it. I was going to tell it, but it takes too long and I would mess it up. So I'm, I'm not going to tell it. But 
I think that's really funny. Well, I'd like to tell that story a whole lot. Okay, so that was great. I had a lot of other really good courses here at Iowa State. This is not all of them. Um, but, you know, I, I really enjoyed you know, Dale Zimmerman. I had a lot of courses from Dale, and I learned a lot from Dale. And, and my own teaching is a, a lot in these same areas. And I've had the pleasure of teaching Dale students in my, or Dale's sons in my own class at Iowa State, which is kind of, kind of neat. Um, and so lots of really, lots of really good courses that, uh, that I learned a lot of stuff at. Uh, you know, Joe, uh, Joe was the guy that everybody was really excited about when he came. He was a new, a new faculty member here at the University of Iowa. People were really excited to have Joe as a faculty. Thought, you know, this is a really smart guy, a really bright guy. And he's, he's coming from Florida, but he's from Minnesota, so he can hand pack the winter here in Iowa. <laughs> probably, probably don't keep him. And it looks like they succeeded. And the, the graduate students, at least some of them, were really excited. And the ones that were excited were the female graduates. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I didn't know this, but apparently they told me that this Joe guy, good looking, <laughs> good looking uh, young guy, you know, probably poor statistician. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were pretty excited about that. I mean, I, he, his class was great. This is a class in categorical data analysis. And, you know, I didn't realize it until I was a uh, professor myself how much work you know, he must have put into that class because, you know, it was. It had application, it had theory, it had computing, it had data, and it, it just had a lot of, of components that are a lot of work. And um, it was really clear and really a really useful course and inspiring and, and it helped in my own teaching. Um, okay, and I had Dick Dykstra for stochastic processes. I only got Dick for one class, and maybe it was because he was chair when I first came and got some teaching release or something for that too. But it was really a great class, really um, clear, and um, you know, I really enjoyed it. There's a picture of uh, uh, I found in one of my albums, at probably at a department picnic or something. Um, and I, Dick was a, uh, he went to Central, played football, and one of his classmates and teammates was a guy named Don Jacobusi. And Don was, Don's from Oklahoma. And Don uh, ended up being a physical therapist. And I, in high school, I played uh, football and basketball and track, and I got injured and cleaned up, and I used to go see Jake for his album all the time, and he would help fix me up so I could compete. And he talked about Dick, and he said, oh, you know, this went on and on about what a great guy he was. And he said, you know, Dick, he was smarter than all the professors at Central, but he was really nice about it. <laughs> 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 yeah. And then, uh, so Tim uh, was my major professor um, with the uh, Young's Press Guard. They were my co-advisors. So I took it in the uh, fall of 93, I had this topics course on um, order restricted inference. And, um, I remember that Bob had said before, you know, if you, I was a student in this program and I was looking for a major professor, you know, I, Tim and Dick are like the best in the world at what they do. There's like, there's hardly anybody better than those two guys in their area. And, you know, I would ask one of those guys to, to be my major professor if I were a student in this program. And so I, I took that uh, to heart and I had taken this topics course and I, you know, enjoyed working with Tim in my class and, and, and learned a lot and thought that was a good start for his research. And so I asked him if he'd be my major professor and he seemed really excited to do that. And it was a good, uh, a great experience for me. I, I really treasure that, and I, I missed him. Uh, so um, I worked with uh, Jens also. Jens was really good. He was a young guy also, and he um, he brought in uh, the topic of genetics into our research program, and um, that has been really useful for me you know, professionally because I I've done a lot of uh, had a lot of opportunities because I had to learn a lot about genetics um, to do to do this dissertation. Tim didn't know a lot about genetics, um, but um, um, he was able to help with the over restricted stuff, and that was a really good experience. Okay, so, um, sorry. I, I, when I don't get enough sleep, I guess I get a little uh, emotional. <laughs> <laughs> it's an emotional day. Yeah. Okay, so this is my uh, graduation. As you can see, that's my wife. And, uh, I, uh, in 96, I made it uh, through the program, and it was a great experience. Okay, so um, I did some fun things too while I was a student here. Uh, one of them was we went canoeing um, one day on the Iowa River. And uh, this is uh, Joy Jordan. She was a student in the program, and, and uh, uh, Mark Johnson. And uh, they had the idea to go canoeing. They had a bunch of friends, and they invited us to go, my wife and I. And, and uh, I said, sure, sure, that sounds fun. So, Mark uh, went and got the canoes from the university, and he rented some canoes and uh, uh, got 
got them on a trailer and you know, we got all set to go and we were driving on uh, uh, Jefferson Street headed east. And uh, Mark was, you know, probably excited to get going. He was going a little fast, and we, we went over to Duke Street, kind of hit a bump. And we get to, you know, two lane one way road. We're driving along the right side, and all of a sudden I'm sitting back and I look, and we're getting passed by the trailer. <laughs> so, so Mark had, uh, in his haste, not really fastened the hitch right. And uh, so the, the trailer with the canoes is, is passing us, and uh, it sideswipes the parked car. and. Oh. and Hits a tree and goes off the off the road, and um, uh, for me that would probably put it into the canoe trip. But Mark and Joy were like, "Oh, that's too bad." You know, they were going to put it under the windshield wiper, so they don't let contact us, and they hitched it back up, and away we went. So we went <laughs> and, uh, there we are. Uh, that's a uh, river. So that was really fun. Um, so I was here for the flood of '93. Okay, and uh, this is the picture probably that, that you've seen already today, right? Um, and this is the water going into the spillway. And I, I had a friend, uh, I, played, I played a lot of basketball when I was here in town, I thought I was going to get to my second. But I had a friend who was a cameraman for KC, uh, KCGR, KCRG, KCGR? RG, okay, KC Rapids. And he was, a, he was a cameraman, and he called me and said, hey, we're going to go out and watch the water going into the spillway and do a story on it. You want to come out with us, and so it was all closed off. Like the National Guard was like blocking it all off and everything, and, and um, but they left the news truck there. So I rode my mountain bike out there, and they threw it in the back of the truck, and we drove in there, and they did a little story on it, and we watched the water go go over the spillway. And I think that was the first time that happened, and then of course it's happened since. And uh, but you know at the time that was the the big flood that that uh, people thought would happen again. And uh, what was it supposed to happen? Yeah, right. That's right. That was the damn Vandal flood. Right, and the water would never go over that spillway, but it did, right? And that's what created the fossil bed now, or carbon revealed them, was that 93 flood. But that was interesting. Here's a picture of me, my son, Karen, and I. Yeah, this is obviously a post for it, and kind of a goofy picture. But it was during this flood, you can see there's floodwaters, so this is City Park. And the floodwaters are all around the tennis court, actually. We probably shouldn't have done that, but we parked up above and then walked down and like, kind of walked through the water and got to the court. The court was like a little island. We played tennis and, and surrounded, by, surrounded by water. Um, that, was, that, was, that was fun. Okay? So, I, as I mentioned, I played a lot of basketball when I was here. I, I lived not too far from the field house. I used to go to the field house all the time and play basketball. There were, there were games all the time. And that was still kind of my passion. Statistics was getting up there, but, but basketball was still the best. And I played with a bunch of uh, former, see, some of these guys are my former former teammates that I played with in college, and some of these guys are guys they knew. This is the cameraman guy. Um, and we played in lots of tournaments, and we played in, uh, you know, Cedar Rapids and the league regularly. And, um, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, and we played in some interesting places. Does anybody know where that, what that place is? That is a, that's a maximum security prison in Anamosa, Iowa, which is not too far from here. Um, and it's, uh, they have uh, about 1,000 prisoners there. And they have, a, they have one of the things they have there, they have a basketball team. And they have a basketball court. And one of the guys on the team knew somebody who worked at the prison. And he arranged for us to have a game there. So we went to the prison. And you go in there, and they, you can't bring anything sharp. And you can't bring any aerosol cans. Um, and they check your bags and everything. You go in there, and then you... You go to the gym, which is not it's a regular size gym, but it's not a lot of, not a lot of seating capacity. But there is there is room for the, uh, the fans to sit. The fans are, are uh, uh, prisoners, and uh, the, the players are prisoners, and the referees are prisoners, and they have guards, you know, that are watching, observing. But you play uh, the prisoners, and we, we did that too on two occasions, and it was really fun. They were really, um, uh, you know, they, if they get out of hand, they lose their privileges. Play. So they, they were really, uh, you know, there were no problems. It was called very closely, and, and the, the, the prisoners that were in the crowd were mostly uh, riding their, their fellow prisoners and giving them hard time. They didn't, they didn't give us much of a hard time. But it was a, that was an interesting experience. So the other thing I, I did is I played um, basketball, excuse me, in the uh, Meskwaki Indian Settlement. Uh, this is a picture of the old gymnasium before they tore it down. Um, they had a a basketball tournament there um, at one time, and this, I played with a different group of people. These were some former 
how his teammates around him that didn't see the falls. And we went, we went to this uh, tournament, and I'm the, we call it the reservation, but I think it's really more appropriately called it an Indian settlement. Um, and one of the teammates was this guy. Okay, I didn't play college basketball with this guy, but these people, he, they knew him. And this is before, so it says, who is this guy? This is a former, uh, it says, from out of nowhere, the Rams Kurt Warner takes the NFL by storm. Okay, so this is this is a guy named Kurt Warner. If you don't know who Kurt Warner is, here's a little, here's a little bit about him. Okay, so in 1989, he graduated from Cedar Rapids Regis High School, not too far from here, and he went to the University of Northern Iowa, and he played football there, but he didn't really get to play until his senior year. And his senior year, then he was he had a really good year. He was the quarterback, and he was the conference <coughs> offensive player of the year. And he didn't get drafted, but he went. He was an undrafted free agent, and he tried out for the Packers, the Green Bay Packers in the NFL. And they cut him from the team. And he came back to Cedar Falls, and he was kind of helping out with the, his former football team. And he was literally working on a high V as a staff boy for five dollars and fifty cents an hour in uh, nineteen ninety four. And it was at this period uh, that he came to the Muskoka Indian settlement and played in the basketball tournament with me uh, and some other people. And I think, you know, you'll see now, I think that's what turned his life around right here. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had this you know, successful basketball thing going on, and then he started to pick it up. Um, in 1995, he signed with the Iowa Barnstormers um, football team. And um, then he, he it took him a little while, but four, four years later, he was uh, in the NFL playing for the St. Louis Rams, and then there was that Sports Illustrated cover I showed you. And that year, he was also the MVP of the NFL, Super Bowl MVP, and uh, 2001, he won the uh, NFL MVP again. And then he came back to Super Bowl in 2008, okay, and uh, with the Arizona Cardinals. And so he was, um, uh, I've never talked to him since <laughs> this long time, but, uh, when he played basketball with me at the, at the Indian settlement, but he was a super nice guy. I remember thinking, oh, he might be kind of like, I think he's really something special because he was like a big star at the University of Northern Iowa or something. But he was super down to earth, really friendly, acted like he knew you all his life, and just he was a really great guy. Um, and then he went on to start him, I guess he's still a good guy, supposed to. So anyway, that was a, that was those are some of the, the fun things I did when I was here uh, that don't necessarily have much to do with statistics. There is a connection to statistics, and some of my recent work, I have a student who is now director of analytics for the Miami Dolphins, and we were working on a project where we were trying to predict uh, men's probability in NFL, in NFL games. I, I, talk, I gave a talk on Monday to the biostat department where I talked about <coughs> this work, and one of the things we can do with these this wind probability calculators is we can look back historically at plays that had a big impact on the wind probability. And it turns out that the, in Super Bowl history, uh, for the data that we have anyway, there was a play in the Super Bowl right at the end of the half where Kurt Warner unfortunately gets intercepted at the goal line and they run all the way back to the other end for a touchdown. And that was the, the biggest change in improbability in Super Bowl history with that one play. Uh, so, sorry for Kurt. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so uh, this has been a great place and, and it's been a great place because of the great people that are here. And um, I had a great experience here in my, my five years. And I, I want to thank everybody for uh, participating in this centennial celebration. It's been really, uh, really neat, or just semi-centennial. And like the other speakers, you know, I have aspirations of coming back.